Bye. Okay. She got anything good? Oh yeah. Steph's winning into Pinos and Syrahs. Mm -hmm. Hey Steph, are you sure we can open anything we want? Anything at all? Uh, sure. Uh, anything but the race board. She has a race board? I have seriously underestimated Stephanie. <laughs> Who do you think you're dealing with here? Wow, yeah. Nice. Very nice. I love this one. Mm -hmm. I don't think we know each other well enough. I'd say this guy's more our speed. Yeah, that one will work too. So, what gems do you have in your collection? Oh, I don't really have a collection. I haven't had a wallet for it. So I just basically live bottle to bottle. But I've got a couple I'm saving. I guess the star would be a 61 Cheval Blanc. You have a 61 Cheval Blanc that's just sitting there? Yeah. Go get it yeah. right now. <laughs> no, seriously, the 61s are peaking. At least that's what I've read. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I've read, too. Well, what are you saving it for? Special occasion with the right person. It was supposed to be for my 10th wedding anniversary. The day you open a 61 Cheval Blanc, it is a special occasion. How long have you been into wine? I started getting serious about seven years ago. What was the bottle that did it for you? An 88 Sasakaya. Really? Congratulations, wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we've got to give it a minute, but uh, I, this is good. What, what about you? I think they overdid it a bit. Too much alcohol, it overwhelms the fruit. You know, I think you're right on the money. Yeah, very good. And who is this? Is this Stephanie's kid? She's cute. Yeah, that's Sienna. She has a sippy. What, is she uh, sleeping? No, she's at her grandma's house. She's with Steph's mom. She spends a lot of time there. Steph's, well, she's Stephanie. You got kids? Who, me? No, no, no. I'd just fuck them up. That was the only unpolluted part of my divorce, is no kids. Yeah, same here. Let's go in there. Okay. Looks as if our friends are hitting it off. So it's kind of weird sitting here with you in Stephanie's house. All those times you came into the restaurant, it's as if you're a real person now. Almost. Yeah, yeah, it is weird. Out of context. Weird but great. Definitely. So, what's your novel about? Um, it's a little bit difficult to summarize, but it's a first-person account of a guy taking care of his father after a, a stroke. It's kind of based on personal experience, but, but only loosely. What's the title? The Day After Yesterday. So you mean today? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there's more to it. Is this about death and mortality? Or? Uh, not really. It, 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 um, it shifts around a lot. It's, it's, um, it, it begins to be seen as, as through the eyes of the father and then uh, and then some more stuff happens there's like a parallel narrative going on and then from there it evolves or maybe devolves into a Rob Grule mystery you know with no real resolution well anyway I think it's great that you're getting it published really I know how hard it is even just to write it thank you <laughs> you know I have this paper that's due on Friday, 
And as usual, I'm getting all freaked out about it. It's just like in high school, it never changes. A paper? Yeah. I'm doing a master's in horticulture. I'm chipping away at it. Wow, really? Horticulture? I, I didn't know there was a school around here. I commute to San Luis Obispo twice a week. Oh, really? But horticulture, so you might work in a winery someday? Hey, you know, I have a copy of my manuscript in the car. It, it's it's not proofed or anything, but uh, if you're okay with a bunch of typos. Yeah, sure, great. <laughs> Why not? I'm the queen of typos. Okay. Wow. You know, I think this is starting to open up a, good, a bit. What do you think? Uh, my palate's kind of shot, but from what I can tell, I dubbed this pretty good. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. Why are you so into Pinos? It's like this thing with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a hard grape to grow, as, as you know. It, it's thin skin, temperamental, and it ripens early. It's not a survivor like Cabernet that can grow anywhere and thrive even when neglected. No, 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 Pinot needs careful attention and in fact, it can only grow in specific tucked away corners of the world. And only the most dedicated and nurturing growers can do it really. tap into Pinot's fragile and delicate qualities. Only someone that's taken the time to truly understand Pinot can coax it to its fullest expression. And when that happens, its flavors are the most haunting and brilliant and subtle I mean, Cabernets can be powerful and exalting, but to me, prosaic by comparison. What about you? What about me? How come you're into wine? It all started with my ex-husband. He had this big show off kind of cellar and I realized that I had a really sharp palate and the more I drank the more I liked what wine made me think about yeah like what like what a fraud he was <laughs> <laughs> no. no I like to think about the life of wine I like to think about what was going on the year the grapes were growing I think about how the sun was shining that summer, or if it rained, what the weather was like. And I think about all of those people who tended and picked the grapes, and if it's a really old bottle, how many of them must be dead by now? I love how wine continues to evolve. Every time I open a bottle, it's going to taste different than if I'd opened it on any other day. Because a bottle of wine is actually alive. It's constantly evolving and gaining complexity. That is until it peaks, like you're 61. And then it begins its steady, inevitable decline. Because it tastes so fucking good. Back that way. 